Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue. Well, summer's starting to wind down. Temperatures have gone up, and I hope you're having a great golf season. Braden Shattuck certainly is. Braden is the Director of Instruction at Rolling Green Country Club, and he's had a big summer so far. Earlier in the summer, he won the National Club Pro Championship, and recently he was at Lookaway, and he was a winner of the Gap Open that involved not just professionals, but some of the area's elite amateurs. Congratulations to Braden. We'll hear his story from Gap's Marty Emino. Also, we're here at Lulu Country Club. We have an expanded teed off topic today. Our panel will discuss golf and gambling. There's been a lot of talk recently about Phil Mickelson, but if you say you have a wager once in a while in a friendly match, you'll enjoy our teed off panel's discussion. So it's all coming up from beautiful Lulu. It's the Gap Open and Golf and Gambling next here on Inside Golf. The 26th season of Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. Your next golf getaway is in Valley Forge in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Visit valleyforge.org. By the First Tee Greater Philadelphia. The First Tee not only helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit firstteephiladelphia.org. By the Philadelphia Association of Golf Course Superintendents a community of professionals enhancing the game of golf since 1925. Make sure you thank your golf course superintendent today. By the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. By Jersey Man and Philly Man Magazine, a digital publication and private business network. Read the current issue free at jerseymanmagazine.com. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia PGA section, the experts in the game and business of golf. Golf is the great equalizer. For many, this journey is an escape from reality, a chance to be part of a team, a career opportunity. PGA Reach impacts lives through golf by lifting people up, giving them hope and sending them down an alternate path that they never saw coming. With PGA Reach Philadelphia, as in life and in golf, the most important shot you take is the next one. When you vacation in Montgomery County, PA, your money worries get a vacation too. Oh, you gotta get your value. Feel free to explore the soldiers' huts. Free? <laughs> Four bucks, that's it? Keep the lettuce coming, Diane. <laughs> Woo, parking is free! Hey, it's free! Park With so many affordable things in Montgomery County, go ahead, freak out. <laughs> Welcome back to Inside Golf. Time for us to take a look at a recent event at Look Away up in Buckingham Bucks County where they held the Gap Open Elite Amateurs versus Area Pros. And it was a big win again for the Director of Instruction at Rolling Green. Let's catch the story. Here with an update is Gap's Marty Emmer. Thanks, Harry. The 119th Open Championship turned into your classic redemption story, complete with a Hollywood ending. Obviously, it felt great to get some redemption from last year since I uh, completely messed that one up on the last hole. Unfortunately, hit it out of bounds and lost by, I think, a shot or two. So it uh, felt good to get this one done. I played well both days and just felt good to get it done and make up for last year. Let's look back at 2022. Shattuck was tied for the open lead at Philadelphia Cricket Club when his drive flared slightly right and stopped inches out of bounds. He would go on to finish in a tie for second. A year later, Shattuck found himself in the same spot with the same shot on the final hole of the Philadelphia Open. Oh yeah, all the negative thoughts came into my head when I was teeing off on 18. As soon as I hit it, I felt great. Yeah, I knew it was going to be pretty good. At Lookaway this year, Shattuck again topped the open leaderboard with a hole to play. Determined to find some redemption, Shattuck stepped onto the 18th tee, took a deep breath, and laced a two-iron drive 
down the center of Lookaway's closer. Needing only a par for the win, Roland Green's director of instruction knocked his 7-iron from 166 yards to 5 feet and made birdie. He finished the Open's 36 holes in 10 under par, two shots clear of the field. His tally equaled the Open's lowest score in relation to par. Rich Steinmetz set that mark in 2009 at Bank Creek. Me and Justin, my caddy, were driving here, and on the way we were talking about scores, and I said double digits will probably be, I think, good enough to maybe get into a playoff or a win. So the goal was to get to five or six under par today on the round, and that's what I was able to do, so, and it worked out. In addition to hoisting the John J. McDermott Trophy, the 28-year-old Shattuck earned the $7,000 low professional prize. Campbell Wolf, an amateur out of Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, placed second at eight under courtesy of a final round 67. Day one leader Trevor Benzel, an assistant pro at Sandy Run, spun his wheels a little bit on day two to finish in an even par 72 and a tie for third at seven under. The Philadelphia Open victory is Shattuck's first. Shattuck entered the day three shots in back of the overnight leaders before a strong middle move put him in prime position. He birdied holes numbers seven, eight, nine, and 10. Yes, four in a row to eliminate a three shot deficit and forge into a tie for the lead. He, Wolf, and Benzel all made the turn at eight under. Shattuck took charge of the tournament with the aforementioned birdie on number 10. He rocketed a three wood that stopped in the greenside rough on the short par four, 308 yard hole. He eventually converted this short four footer for birdie to move a shot clear. The lead looked short lived for Shattuck after he smothered his tee shot left on the par three 11th. However, he made this nifty up and down to save par and hold fast. With two holes remaining, Shattuck and the 24 year old Wolf were the last pair standing. Shattuck, a one-stroke lead. Wolf, in the group ahead of the leader, played the par 5 17th first and two putted from 90 feet for birdie to force a tie atop the scoreboard. Shattuck responded in kind though. He knocked a five iron from 220 yards to just short of the green, approximately 60 feet away. He converted the ensuing three footer for birdie to regain the lead. I was just trying to play pretty boring golf, to be honest. So uh, I think that was kind of uh, kind of the plan this entire week, and you know, just go out there and, and be competent with what I was doing. So was a bit slow yesterday, and um, you know, so unfortunately I was a little far behind. But I started out great today, and um, yeah, I mean, it's awesome that I uh, that I was able to come this close. Wolf made a run into the championship pitcher with an early stretch similar to Shattuck's. He birdied number one and then added red figures on holes numbers three through six to lap a number of contenders. The highlight, a 40-foot birdie on number six, the par three. The year of Shattuck continues with two major victories added to his already lengthy and impressive resume. The Wilmington, Delaware resident made headlines nationwide with a victory in the 2023 PGA Professional Championship in May. There, he made a 10-foot par save on the last hole to secure the win. Now, he has one of Philadelphia's most prestigious championships to add to it. I've tried, I've tried to win this tournament a couple times. Didn't work out for me, so, uh, you know, I feel good because there's a lot of good names on that trophy. To be in that company feels great. And, uh, the Golf Association of Philadelphia is, you know, coveted in uh, the different states around this area. Everybody talks it up, and uh, it's uh, it feels really nice to win this one. The Open is Gap's third oldest championship, founded in 1903. What a year for Braden Shattuck so far! Congratulations on your Philadelphia Open title, and we're looking forward to many more things to come. Reporting for Gap, I'm Marty Emino. Thanks, Marty, and congratulations again to Braden Shattuck. 
All right, stay with us. Next up here on Inside Golf, our teed off panel. It's an expanded version of teed off as we're going to be talking about Phil Mickelson, golf, and gambling. All three kind of coming together this year. That's next here on Inside Golf. Because it's going to balance out what I really, really. The Golf Association of Philadelphia, founded in 1897. GAP is the nation's oldest regional or state golf association. We serve amateur golf in Eastern PA, Southern New Jersey, and all of Delaware. GAP welcomes all golfers, junior or senior, male or female, public or private. Join the Golf Association of Philadelphia today. Our mission is always to preserve, protect, and promote the great game of golf. Before you tee it up, look us up. Visit GAPGolf.org to find out more. Welcome back to Inside Golf. We're going to do something a little bit differently uh, today on Inside Golf. We normally have our teed off panel, and, and the gentlemen with me are pretty familiar faces and uh, talking about uh, items on uh, teed off for, for years in the case of one of them, Joe Logan. Today we're going to talk about a topic that's uh, kind of relatively hot, and we're going to expand it. We're going to have uh, a double session of our teed off panel. Joe Logan is here from myphillygolf.com. Oscar Mestri, as you can tell from his logo, is with the Golf Association of Philadelphia. He's a big name, folks. He's in his third year as president. Always a pleasure. And by the way, uh, a shout out to you for finishing top 40 in the recently played British Senior Amateur Championship in the UK. Way to, way to go, Oscar. Thank huh? you very much. That's some accomplishment for a guy like yourself. Good. I saw it coming though. Very pleased. You've Thank had you. A, you've had a good summer. Thank you. And uh, Harry Mays, he has a good season no matter what it is. <laughs> summer, fall, spring, winter, whatever the deal. From uh, his podcast, Swing It and Ding It. Uh, Joe, Alan Shipnick made a lot of news when he wrote a book uh, about Phil. It was titled what? Phil. Yeah. A, a year and a half ago or so. He's back in the news now because he got an excerpt of a book, an autobiography by Billy Walters. Billy Walters was described as one of the most successful American sports bettors of all time. Ran into some legal problems, though. He was convicted of inside trading uh, with the stock market. Billy now is out with his own book. It's an autobiography in which he says, Phil Mickelson, among other things, bet as much as maybe $1 billion in his career on golf, including an attempt, although both Walters and Mickelson said the bet was never made on a, on a Ryder Cup. Your thoughts, first of all, on this latest Phil controversy? Well, I don't know. For me, a billion dollars is getting up around real money. And uh, you know, <laughs> it's past real money. <laughs> I, it's inconceivable to me to bet that much money, even over a lifetime. Uh, and it's a nasty habit you might want to break unless you're winning. You know, I, I would be surprised. I am inclined to believe Billy Walters' story on this over Phil's because it just seems like something Phil would do. Yeah, it, it's a lot of money though, yeah. right? And, but here's the thing, uh, I'm sure, and I know from some pretty good sources, uh, there are pro golfers out there on the tour I'm talking about who have bet uh, on themselves in events. Okay, not to the extent maybe of a billion dollars or four hundred thousand dollars, and certainly nobody with the name value of, of Phil Mickelson. And we all know that betting has become for years part of the culture of just the amateurs going out there on a Saturday morning and right. saying, Okay, what are we playing for? Right. right. This is a little bit different story. But is there another sport, do you think, where where players, whether they be pros or amateurs, bet so much money? Well, so much money. I mean, they like 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 Joe said, a billion dollars is getting to be almost real money. <laughs> but uh, but I think that you know NFL, NBA. I mean, you know, college sports. There's been right stories written over the years. I think 
I think the most interesting thing about about Phil, if you if you take it in its entirety, is you know he's obviously has some type of a an, an addictive addiction problem, and so you know it's not something we really want to make light of. I, honestly, I think the we one of the comments we had had pre pre uh, pre um, filming was you know who who had the proper response? Was it was it was it Rory McIlroy saying, hey, you know, uh, he can bet this year because he's not going to be part of the Ryder Cup? Or um, Phil, or was had it, it, or, Phil had a comeback. Yes. <laughs> or was it, or was it uh, you know, uh, Spieth because he's kind of caught himself stopped? I think today, this morning, Lanny Watkins is, uh, is now taking a pretty good shot at him, saying that he, in his mind, is, you know, the, the position he was in golf, and he had to be one of the, you know, great spokesman players of all time. Is kind of it's it's been you know lost. He's disappointed. He's thrown away his opportunity at a tremendous legacy. I think that's what's really sad about the entire story. But you know we're getting into like a a, a mor morality play here. Uh, Tiger took a little bit of heat for the revelations of what he was doing in his uh, off the course activities while being a married man. Nothing to the extent though like I don't remember Lanny Watkins coming out and saying oh well his his legacy is destroyed now. Right. Well, yeah, he was talking about he'll probably never be able to be a Ryder Cup captain, and he probably would have been a two-time captain, yep. and he's destroyed that legacy, and a lot of that is true. But when it comes to gambling and Phil Mickelson, I believe everything. I mean, I, a billion dollars seems obscene, but I believe it. <laughs> and when it comes to he was investigating betting on the Ryder Cup on himself, I would believe it. I don't know if it's true, but... Uh, nothing surprises me as far he as wasn't as using Harry Mays's money though. no 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 now, no, no now where do you draw the line in terms of well, what's a good number a half a billion five you know 500, 500 million what where, where do Don't you draw the line you. and saying that's that's going to cost them his legacy as a perhaps a Ryder Cup captain don't bet over your head that's uh, all did he I ever say. do it no probably yes I'm sure he did <laughs> yes I think he did he yeah. seems to enjoy all yeah. of this sort of snarky give and take yeah he's not back down if anything he's ratcheting it up and uh, doing battle and happy about it. Yep. All right, stay with us. We are going to continue this discussion on Phil and a billion dollars of gambling and gambling in general when it comes to the game of golf when we come back with a couple added panelists. That's next here on Inside Golf. Welcome back. Inside Golf continues from the back deck here at Lulu Country Club in Upper Dublin. We're talking about gambling and golf. We've added a couple panelists to our original panel that began the show. One of them, Chris Wegner, who is the general manager of Philmont. He's a PGA professional and he's making his debut, his initial appearance here on Inside Golf. Good to see you, Chris. Thank you, I'm excited to be here. Uh, I hope you are. Yeah. We're excited to have you. Uh, back with us for part two on this topic, not because he's a big golf gambler, but just Expert. because he brings Expert. so much to the table when it comes to talking about any topic of golf. Oscar Mestri, president of the Golf Association of Philadelphia. And here's Jim Sullivan. He's a local member here at Lulu. Witnessed the shirt and the logo and uh, had his run as a PGA professional. Now you're back to amateur status. He even caddies once in a while for some big names. Only special occasions. Uh, Chris, back to you. We're picking up this topic of uh, gambling and golf and who does it and who doesn't and for how much and Phil Mickelson and all that. Uh, what's your experience as a player and now as a, shall we say, golf administrator with gambling and the sport of golf? Well, I think, you know, gambling is so ingrained in the culture of the game. Um, but as a player, I always try to play for something that doesn't get anybody hurt. And then as a manager, you know, as long as we know what the whole, what the most loss is in a game. So if guys are going to go out, they know it's a $3 Nassau or there's a $20 chance of losing. I'm trying to keep it really simple. You know? But then there's also events where we've got the big Calcutta purses and, yeah. and stuff like that and the paramutuals, and those are always really exciting. Right. Um, you know, a lot of times your partner will determine you know, what the game's going to be. Oscar, you told the story before we uh, started to turn on our cameras here, and I think it's worth telling as a youngster at uh, Overbrook. Uh, you were a pretty good player and you were going to go out and play with a senior member, shall we say, yes. whose handicap is a little bit higher. Tell the story. Well, he just said, you know, when we got to the first tee and we tried to establish what the stakes were, you know, I said, you know, I mean, I'll 
two bucks, whatever. <laughs> what are we playing for? Three bucks? That was when money was money, but don't forget. <laughs> Back in the 70s. But, um, but uh, and, and he said, geez, I don't even leave the, the locker room for that I kind of I wouldn't even come bet. out here, right? <laughs> so I was like, hmm. Well, you got a decision to make, don't you? <laughs> and you were what? What was your handicap at the I time? I was a scratch. And he was? And he was like a 15. He was very comfortable 15. I was going to say, he had no problem taking the club back, right? He had no problem. How about that? How about it, Sully? What's your, you know, you've had vast experiences, all kinds of players, maybe all types of games, right? Yeah, I think, I think you have to play for something, right? But if it's enough that you're not going to admit it to your wife when you get home, it might be playing for a little too much. So... You know, I, I like playing a $5 Nassau where you play five for the front, 10 for the back, 10 for the 18, and then presses are five bucks and they're automatic at two down. That's a simple, basic, easy game. Maybe you play a couple bucks for birdies. At, at my extreme, you know, I've never played for a lot of money, but I think I probably played a $100 Nassau one time where it was like 100 for the front, 100 for the back, 100 for the 18. And winning a few hundred bucks isn't going to do enough you know change my life and losing it would be a problem i wouldn't i really wouldn't enjoy it so well i've played a lot of golf where you know you want to have some pressure on you and figure out how to play under those circumstances i didn't enjoy playing for that kind of money right do you know certain guys that, like that fellow that said to you i for two dollars i wouldn't even come out here and lace it up are there some guys that just have to have action every yes. time they play yeah no i think i think there is and you know i, I think the rule of thumb honestly is if you're playing within the same group all the time, stakes don't matter because it's going to balance out. What I really, really get offended by is the one-time hit wonder. <laughs> the guy who wants to just schedule you yeah. to make, make a pain and you're never going to get another shot at the money. Yeah, right. That, to me, is a problem. But if, you're, if we're in the same group and we're playing 10 times, we can we, pick the number. It's going gonna, it's gonna to pretty much shake out. Right. It's the one hit wonders that, that I have a major problem with. The guy you're, you're gonna play once, and when you walk to the first tee, he goes, hey, how about 100? Yeah, yeah great, when well, am I gonna see you again? <laughs> Chris, you've gone on golf trips, or maybe on vacations, where you go and uh, to a resort, you're playing with somebody you don't even know, and the first thing he does after saying where you're from is, what do you wanna play for? And you don't even know anything about this guy's game, right? You trust he tells you his real handicap. You feel, is that an awkward position? It is, and that's why I kinda go to food. Uh, you know, let's play for lunch. I know where I've got my limit. Um, but speaking of golf trips, I mean, I have members at the club where they'll do what Oscar's saying. You know you're going to split it all up. So they take the winnings every week and put it in a golf trip pool. You know, and I may pay more for more of the golf trip at the end of the day when it gets up to 1000 or whatever. But it's everybody's reaping in the benefits Duh. of it. That's, yeah, a, that's yeah, a great yeah, way. That's you know. interesting. Yeah, somebody, so instead of taking it home, some you're lucky, just throwing it in a uh, pot. Some lucky guys going to have a nice golf trip at somebody else's Jim's expense. vacation would be free. How about yeah. that? Well, well, you don't know. Yeah, you not hope likely. it is. Not well, likely. <laughs> yeah. So what would be your limit this afternoon if you went out there? What's your normal match here? To me against At you? Lulu. Yeah, and you're giving me <laughs> a lot of shots. Listen, if you said you wanted to play a $20 Nassau, I'd have no problem with it. If you said 50 I, I would. <laughs> if you said 50 I would say, let's really talk about shots and let me see what your handicap is. Okay. That, you know, but, but if you, you know, I think we would agree at 5 or $10 Nassau and be happy to do it. And, and I'm going to try to beat you for that $20. You know, that's that, the thing. You just said, uh, I want to know what your handicap is. You know, now, thanks to the Gin yeah, app, correct. you can look up and see what guys, now they can fudge on their handicap too. Sure. But have you ever done that? Like yeah. a guy you don't know ahead of time? And you just want to check and see what his handicap is? Well, you know, people walk up to the first tee and say, well, I don't really remember. And I go, well, it's pretty simple. <laughs> We're going to find out right now. Or they I mean, give you the, I'm about a 13. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, by the way, and that used to be back in the day, right? Yeah. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't adjust on a daily basis. Right. It adjusted on a monthly basis or so. Not all that long and ago. And you didn't see the trends. So it's, it's, uh, there's no question. A lot of that's been taken out by the technology. But again, I, I think the key is final question, and you have 15 seconds to answer, Chris. Is it here to stay, though? Gambling and golf? Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. It's part and parcel yeah, of as, the game. As, yeah. okay. It's as locked in. You don't agree? Ball. Yeah. Oh yeah. There you have it. Enjoy it, whether it's for a candy bar or a little bit a more. Hundred bucks. We'll be back. Inside Golf continues in a moment. Designed by Donald Ross, Lulu Country Club is one of the premier private golf courses in Montgomery County. This classic 18-hole course boasts a new state-of-the-art clubhouse with many amenities for members to enjoy. Members are invited to play in events, tournaments, and enjoy guest privileges. For more information, contact membership at lulucc.com. 
Hi, Tony Salucci with the Beacon Group of Companies. If your company has between 50 and 500 employees enrolled in your health insurance plan, there's a really good chance we can reduce your costs significantly and increase the benefits employees receive. How do we do it? We put you together with several thousand employers of a similar size across the country so your company can get amazing buying power. Schedule a conversation with one of our employee benefit specialists today at mybeacongroup.com. Park Gate is free, y'all! Hey! Four bucks! Yes! With so many affordable things to do in Montgomery County, PA, go ahead, free out! That's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf. Next week, we'll introduce you to Neil Oxman. Maybe you know the name and maybe you don't. If you know the name, you know he has caddied several times for Tom Watson, also Andy North. And this fall, he'll be on the bag in the Champions Tour for Freddie Couples. Neil Oxman, interesting guy, great background, and he loves golf and caddying. That's next week here on Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue. Remember, no matter how bad it's going for you on a hot summer day, maybe your partner's in more trouble than you know. That's why you never pick up. See you next week on Inside Golf. The 26th season of Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. Your next golf getaway is in Valley Forge in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Visit valleyforge.org. By the First Tee Greater Philadelphia. The First Tee not only helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit firstteephiladelphia.org. By the Philadelphia Association of Golf Course Superintendents, a community of professionals enhancing the game of golf since 1925. Make sure you thank your golf course superintendent today. By the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. By Jersey Man and Philly Man Magazine, a digital publication and private business network. Read the current issue free at jerseymanmagazine.com. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia PGA section, the experts in the game and business of golf.